glaciers stand guard through millennia as silent markers, noting the planet's health in their veins. These icy landscapes collect vital information about our planet's past. You can think about glaciers and ice cores like uh, historical textbooks written in chemical alphabet. And through the analysis of this uh, book, we can learn the past atmospheric composition of the Earth. Understanding our climate's past is key for predicting our planet's future. But these icy archives may face extinction by the next century. Greenland recently lost a record-breaking 12.5 billion tons of ice in just one day. With these valuable chapters at risk of being lost forever, a team of engineers and scientists sprung into action. They're racing against time to preserve the glacier's memories before they vanish. So the S-Memory project is a project that was born in Italy and France, and the aim is to go around in the world and collect from the different glaciers in the world some ice cores that then will be shipped to Antarctica, where they will be available for the future generation scientists when maybe glaciers will not exist anymore or the information stored in these ice will be compromised. That information is locked away deep inside a glacier and developed over centuries of snowfall. Glaciers and, uh, yes, ice forms in places on Earth where temperatures are well below zero all over the year, where we have some accumulation during winter and limited ablation during, during summer. To uncover this story, scientists drill and extract ice cores to analyze the layers of dust, pollens, and gases that get trapped in the ice as more snow falls. Different compositions show up each year, so the difference in properties represent distinct periods in the ice. So we know that in one year a volcanic eruption happened, and if we find this volcanic layer uh, through the analysis of uh, different chemicals, for instance, uh, sulfate in the ice, we know that this sulfate peak is related to a specific volcanic eruption that happened in uh, 1991. The project team has already embarked on numerous field missions over the last few years. So we have the drilling team, which is the most important because I mean, they collect the ice. And then we have the logging team. You drill and you collect, you measure and you cut it on the right measure. You store, you archive the core step by step. You work basically from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you don't have a lot of time to think about your feeling. In this particular science work, it's, yes, science, of course, is the first thing, but then it's also an adventure because you go in remote areas and you have to face like polar bears or a lot of hard weather conditions. And you need to be trained also before because the amount of oxygen that you can breathe there is around the half that the one you breathe at the, at the sea level. But the hours spent weathering the unpredictable and challenging conditions on these icy monoliths has a worthwhile reward. I mean, it's a unique thing that you can touch something that is so old, but then you are the one that look at it for the first time. And as this mission treks across continents to collect as many cores as possible, interpreting that data is going to be trickier than ever. The worst nightmare is the presence of ice lenses in the stratigraphy, which means part of the ice which has melt and then it uh, refrosts, which is a clue of summer melting. And this is what compromises the climate information in the ice because we have the mixing of the information. This leaves a daunting challenge for future climatologists, which makes creating a global glacier library critical. Preserving this extensive record of ice cores will be pivotal in building models that could help scientists predict how our climate could shift and change in the future. In 2021, 2022, these cores will be shipped to, to Antarctica, to the Dome Sea Station, where the average temperature is well below the zero Celsius degree. And so it acts like a natural freezer where it's possible to store without any problem. Antarctica was selected as the destination to store the ice cores for a host of other reasons, but perhaps... Maybe the most romantic reason is that Antarctica doesn't belong to anyone. Science is for everyone and these cores are for everyone and they are stored in a place which is for everyone who wants to do research. However, with global temperatures on the rise, Francois is already seeing how precious and unique the Ice Memory Project's perspective really is. So it's quite scary, we can say, because you can actually see the efforts of global warming, not from a TV screen, but 
reality. And I was quite scared when I flew to Greenland. I saw a lot of melt ponds on the glacier, so it was the clue that actually glaciers, even in Greenland, so even so high in latitude, glaciers were melting and they were forming these lakes on the glacier that were really beautiful to see, but they were the clue of global warming. It was a sad beauty. Only few glaciers in the world are increasing their mass, but the 99% of the glaciers are, are melting in Italy, in Europe, everywhere. So it's an accelerating process that by the end of this century, at least uh, in Italy, so in the Alps, glaciers below 3,000 meters of elevation will be completely gone. Despite facing extreme conditions, an uncertain future, and a project that will likely exceed their lifetimes, they continue to chase ice anyway. The experience you have in just collecting this piece of ice and then analyze them, it's the adventure itself. Thanks to this backup, the future scientists will have ice where they can do their research and maybe they can discover something different and something more.